Hello everyone and welcome back to our 30 day study challenge. Today we're going to be talking about cell parts or cell organelles and we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're still going to do our brief content overview, make that really fast, and then for practice questions today we're going to be doing some flashcard practice, which is a great active studying strategy that you can use at home and you can even use the flashcard examples that I'm going to put up on screen, make your own flashcards, and then practice again and again to remember these organelles. So different cells will have different organelles depending on the functions that they serve, pro prokaryotic organisms are going to have different organelles than eukaryotic organisms. And remember, prokaryotes are organisms that lack a nucleus and membrane-bound organelle, so they're going to be relatively simple compared to our eukaryotic organisms. They're going to be pretty small, and in general, they will have fewer components. Our eukaryotic organisms, including plants, animals, protists, fungi, these will all have cells with membrane-bound or organelles that are surrounded by a membrane. And we can compare different types of cells like plant and animal cells, both eukaryotes, and see, for example, that a plant cell has a chloroplast and an animal cell does not. So let's look at these two pictures. We have the nucleus, drawn simply here, a plasma membrane, which is the surrounding double layer around the cell, which if we zoom in closely, we see is a phospholipid bilayer cell wall with plant cells and certain prokaryotic cells and mitochondria, this oval with the squiggly line, our vacuoles here and here, chloroplasts, again only in plant cells, and ribosomes represented frequently by little dots. Sometimes you'll see a mitochondrion drawn very uh, technically and they look a little bit more like this than the simplified drawing here, but sometimes you'll just see an oval with a squiggly line. So you need to be able to recognize both types of pictures. And you'll also potentially see a chloroplast drawn more like this than the one I have in my picture. These are stacks of thylakoids, which are an important part of the chloroplast. Don't really need to focus on that for the biology EOC, just be able to recognize chloroplast as an important organelle with these kind of stack-like structures within a plant cell only. So getting back into the differences between animal and plant cells, which you might remember again from other science classes, plant cells have cell walls or and they look kind of like these geometric shapes. Animal cells do not. Plant cells also have chloroplast where animal cells do not, and plant cells tend to have one large vacuole for water storage where animals can have smaller vacuoles or multiple vacuoles. So make sure you recognize those main differences between plant and animal cells. That's, those aren't the only differences, but those are key important ones. So recognizing our organelles by picture, again, here's our simplified mitochondria. This is for energy, so you need to be able to understand that the mitochondria is where the cellular energy is created or made in a process called cellular respiration. You need to know more than just the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Here are simple circles with kind of a blank space in them. That would be a vacuole, which again is for storage. Our ribosomes are represented by little dots, and this is where proteins are made. Our nucleus is going to be in the center of the cell. Sometimes you'll see chromosomes if they're, the DNA is condensed represented in them, but it's going to store our DNA or our genetic information in eukaryotic organisms, and we'll get to that in a second. Our cell membrane is going to be represented, if we zoom in closely, by these this phospholipid bilayer, and its purpose is to provide a semi-permeable barrier, letting some things in and some things out of the cell in order for the cell to maintain homeostasis and do everything that it needs to do. Our cell wall is going to provide structure and support, another layer of protection of the cell, again not in animal cells, and it's going to be kind of geometric in shape. And our chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis, only in plant cells, so we're not going to see these in animal cells. Now if we look back at our plant and animal cells, these are both eukaryotic organisms, meaning they have a true nucleus, or they have a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. So organelles like the mitochondria, organelles like vacuoles, and these are generally larger and more complex. Prokaryotic organisms are more primitive. We think they evolved first. They typically only have a few key features. So they're very simple, they're very, very small. They're more abundant on Earth than eukaryotic cells, but um, they're very different. So in prokaryotic cells, we do not have any of those membrane-bound organelles. We don't have a mitochondria, we don't have vacuoles, we don't have a nucleus. Instead, the DNA is just free-floating within the cell in a feature we call the nucleoid. We do have ribosomes because all cells do make proteins and have to do protein synthesis. We do have a cell membrane to contain the cytoplasm and the essential function of that and the essential features of that cell um, and that's about it sometimes there'll be external features like our flagella which is for movement or cilia also for movement those are small hair-like structures those can exist in prokaryotic organisms but 
Again, not all prokaryotic cells have those. So again, prokaryotic organisms, much more simple, no nucleus, no membrane bound organelles, very, very simple features. Plant and animal cells are both eukaryotic. A few other organelles I wanted to mention include the endoplasmic reticulum. We both have the smooth ER and the rough ER. The rough ER contains ribosomes. And this organelle is a network of tubules and sacs that helps transport proteins and other materials within the cell. This right here is, could be a, a lysosome, maybe a peroxisome, but it's a lysosome that is a membrane-bound sac that has enzymes that helps break down waste products and other damaged organelles, kind of like a garbage disposal of the cell. And then of course the Golgi apparatus or Golgi body that is responsible for packaging and shipping materials within the cell or out of the cell. Now that is just a quick glimpse at some important organelles, the basics. Obviously there are more organelles you've probably encountered or will encounter in your biology class, but let's move forward with some practice problems. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do flashcards where I give you a function or a definition of an organelle or something related to what we've just talked about. And then I'm gonna have you think of the answer, the term that corresponds to the definition, and then I'll reveal it. This is a good way to make sure you really do know each individual function instead of just saying, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Let's go. A single-celled or multicellular organism that has a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. Think you know it? A eukaryote or a eukaryotic organism. A single-celled organism that does not have a nucleus or other membrane-bound organelles. Well, if it's not a eukaryote, it's a prokaryote. All right, these are cylindrical structures that help organize the cell during cell division. We actually didn't cover this in our overview, so let's see if you remember it from your biology class. Centrioles. We'll talk more about these when we get to our day on cell division. A large fluid-filled sac that stores nutrients and helps maintain cell structure in plants. A vacuole. A membrane-bound sac that contains enzymes that break down waste products and damaged organelles. Think you know it? It's a lysosome. Now remember, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause me as we get to each definition, or you can put me on mute and just go through the whole thing on your own. An organelle responsible for modifying and packaging proteins with other and other molecules for transport within the cell or for export from the cell. That's the Golgi apparatus, or Golgi body, as you might call it. A network of tubules and sacs that helps transport proteins and other molecules within the cell. Proteins is our key hint here, because on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, we can find ribosomes, which are an important organelle that make proteins. Oh, well, small structures that produce proteins, I kind of gave this one away. You got it? It's ribosomes. All right, a rigid structure that surrounds the cell membrane of plants and some other organisms, like ba some bacteria, the cell wall. The gel-like substance inside the cell membrane. That's the cytoplasm. An organelle in plant cells that uses sunlight to produce food. You got it, it's the chloroplast. The site of energy production within eukaryotic cells. Think you know it? That's the mitochondria. Keep in mind that with flashcards, it's helpful to do them again and again, to put them into piles, to shuffle them, to do them at different times throughout the week in preparation for whatever you're studying for. So go ahead and make flashcard sets of your own to prepare for this topic. All right, tomorrow on day five, we're gonna be talking about surface area to volume ratios, compartmentalization, the evolution of cells like eukaryotic cells. So I hope you stay tuned for every day of our 30 day biology study challenge. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.